Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always we have special tributes in our Today's Top Headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin. Thank you. Number 13. Renowned for his charismatic portrayal of Brian Tanner on the hit 1980s NBC sitcom ALF, Benji Gregory captured the hearts of audiences with his genuine performances and enduring charm. Born Benjamin Gregory Hertzberg on May 26, 1978 in Encino, California, he was a pivotal part of a show that humorously explored the antics of a wise-cracking extraterrestrial living with a suburban family. The series not only entertained but also subtly broached themes of acceptance and curiosity about the unknown. Gregory's career in acting spanned throughout his childhood and adolescence, becoming a beloved figure in American television. After 101 episodes and widespread acclaim, he chose a life away from the spotlight. His later years were marked by service to his country. He joined the U.S. Navy in 2003, where he served as an aerographer's mate until receiving an honorable medical discharge in 2005 due to health issues. Beyond his professional life, Gregory faced personal challenges, including battles with depression and bipolar disorder. His commitment to managing these conditions demonstrated his resilience and strength. Tragically, Benji Gregory passed away at the age of 46, under circumstances that reflect the quiet struggles he endured. His death occurred in Peoria, Arizona, where he was found alongside his beloved service dog, Hans, marking a poignant end to his journey. Benji Gregory's legacy in the entertainment industry, combined with his service and personal courage, continue to inspire many. His life reminds us of the importance of compassion and support for those battling mental health issues. Tributes to Benji Gregory to Benji. Number 12. Renowned for her unwavering support and as a pivotal figure in the life of rock star John Bon Jovi, Carol Bon Jovi's impact on the music world, though indirect, was profoundly influential. Known affectionately as Mom Jovi, her dedication extended beyond her family, touching the lives of countless fans as the founder of the Bon Jovi Band's fan club. Her unique background as one of the first Playboy bunnies and a former Marine added to her mystique and appeal making her a cherished icon among the band's community. Born Carol Sharkey on July 6, 1941, in Erie, Pennsylvania, she ventured into several roles, from floristry to military service, before settling in Sayreville, New Jersey. There, she fostered an environment that nurtured her son John's burgeoning musical talents. From a young age, Carol recognized and encouraged her son's performance abilities, famously lining up with him before a mirror to sing along to popular songs which cultivated his artistic flair. This early support was instrumental in his pursuit of a music career, underscored when she bought him his first guitar at the age of seven. Carol's influence extended into her son's professional life, where she remained a supportive figurehead throughout his rise to stardom. Her story was emblematic of a resilient, multifaceted woman who balanced personal ambitions with deep familial commitments. Carol's legacy includes not just the global superstar she raised, but also the cohesive family ethos she nurtured, visible in her long marriage of 63 years to John Bon Jovi, Sr., and her close relationships with her children and grandchildren. Carol Bon Jovi passed away just shy of her 84th birthday in Long Branch, New Jersey. She leaves behind a lasting impact, not only on her family, but also on the broader music community, remembered for her robust spirit and heartfelt support of her son's dreams. Tributes to Carol Bongiovi.
Number 11. Renowned for her role as the stylish host and manager Dora May on the iconic CBS primetime soap Dallas, Pat Colbert was a significant figure in television, known for her elegance and intelligence on screen. Born Sandra Patricia Colbert on January 16, 1947, in Los Angeles, California. She grew up in a family nurtured by her mother, Eula, a homemaker and foster care worker, and her father, Leroy, a construction worker who built their family home. Throughout her career, Colbert graced several other notable shows, bringing her charm to Flamingo Road, another production by Lorimar Productions, and appearing alongside Bill Cosby in the 1987 spy spoof Leonard Part 6. Her television credits include guest roles on popular series such as Benson, The Fall Guy, Sisters, and True Colors. Before her time on Dallas, Colbert was part of the ensemble cast in Flamingo Road, where she played one of the working girls in the Roadhouse during the show's first season. In addition to her television career, Colbert's early years included work as a model for department store campaigns and as a fashion consultant, which transitioned into acting roles that also showcased her style and presence. She appeared in Blake Edwards' SOB and had roles on Capital, the Dallas spin-off Knott's Landing, and more recent projects such as Tom and Dusty Go to Mexico, The Lost Treasure, and If Not for His Grace. Pat Colbert passed away at her home in Compton, California, at the age of 77. She had been a beloved member of the television community, leaving behind a legacy that includes her son Michael and siblings Aaron and Jonetta. Her portrayal of Dora May not only marked a significant part of her career, but also enriched the storytelling tapestry of Dallas, making her a cherished figure in the show's history. Tributes to Pat Colbert. Number 10. Renowned for introducing Bob Dylan to the band and launching the careers of icons like Leonard Cohen and Emmylou Harris, Mary Martin became a legendary figure in the music industry. Her pioneering efforts and unwavering support for artists shaped the rock and folk music scenes profoundly. Mary Martin was born on June 15, 1939 in Toronto, Canada, and quickly established herself in Manhattan's vibrant Greenwich Village. Here she began her illustrious career blending a sharp eye for talent with a dedication that often placed artists' interests above commercial profit. As a Grammy-winning talent scout, manager, and record executive, Martin's influence extended across rock, country, folk, and Americana, earning her widespread respect for her fierce loyalty to artists and her keen eye for budding talent. Throughout her career, Martin worked with numerous future legends, playing a pivotal role in their development and success. Her strategic insight during the 1965 Newport Folk Festival led to her encouraging Bob Dylan's partnership with the band, setting the stage for one of rock's most historic collaborations. She also signed emerging talents like Emmylou Harris and Rodney Crowell, guiding them through their early careers with her unique blend of mentorship and advocacy. After decades of groundbreaking work, including stints as an executive at Warner Brothers and RCA Records, Martin continued to influence the industry from Nashville becoming a staple at venues like the Bluebird Cafe. Her work culminated in producing Timeless, a Grammy-winning album featuring interpretations of Hank Williams's songs by contemporary artists, highlighting her lasting impact on music. Mary Martin passed away in Nashville at the age of 85, leaving behind a legacy that continues to resonate within the music community. Her life's work not only transformed individual careers, but also eric the broader musical landscape Tributes to Mary Martin.
Number 9. Renowned for pioneering gene splicing guidelines that protected emerging biotechnological practices, Maxine Singer was a seminal figure in biochemistry. Born on February 15, 1931 in New York City, her insights and leadership calmed public fears about genetic engineering's potential dangers. She blazed a trail as president of the Carnegie Institution for Science, where she championed science education and nurtured a generation of researchers. Her work from the 1960s through the 1970s was critical, as she navigated the ethical and biological complexities of gene splicing, ensuring rigorous safety standards and fostering public dialogue on biotechnological advances. Singer's career was marked by her deft synthesis of scientific rigor and ethical foresight. She played a pivotal role in the Asilomar Conference on Recombinant DNA in 1975, which set vital research guidelines that have shaped decades of genetic research. She was not just a scientist but a visionary who saw the implications of genetics on future generations. Beyond her professional endeavors, Singer was deeply committed to education, believing that a well-informed public was crucial for the advancement of science. Maxine Singer passed away at the age of 93 in Washington, D.C., after a life spent advancing science and advocating for responsible research practices. Her legacy is evident in the safer methods and ethical standards now commonplace in genetic research, reflecting her profound impact on science and society. Tributes to Maxine Singer. Number 8. Renowned for his significant contributions to global cinema, theater, and literature, Bruno Zanin brought depth and authenticity to his roles, drawing from his rich and varied life experiences. Known for his captivating performance as Tita in Federico Fellini's Amarcord, Zanin's career spanned over five decades, marked by collaborations with notable directors such as Giuliano Montaldo and Lina Wertmüller. Bruno Zanin was born on April 9, 1951, in Borhomi, then part of the USSR, to a family of farmers. His early life, as described in his autobiographical novel, Nobody Must Know, was one of turmoil and adventure, influencing both his personal and professional paths. After leaving school at 14, his journey took him through various life experiences, including time in jail, before unexpectedly turning to acting. Zanin's filmography is extensive, with standout roles in City Under Siege, Killer Cop, and the historical TV miniseries, Marco Polo. His theatrical work often saw him in plays by Carlo Goldoni, performing in his native Venetian dialect, which he delivered with an unmatched authenticity. Beyond the screen and stage, Zanin was a dedicated father to his two sons, Francesco and Fiorenzo, and lived a life close to nature in a log cabin in Vanzone con San Carlo, a serene village beneath Monte Rosa. His love for the arts extended into writing, with his novel gaining critical acclaim and being translated into Spanish, broadening his influence beyond Italian-speaking audiences. Bruno Zanin passed away at the age of 73. His death marks the loss of a prolific and beloved figure in the arts, whose works and performances left an everlasting mark on both the Italian cultural landscape and international audiences. His legacy, characterized by a blend of artistic brilliance and personal resilience continues to inspire and resonate within the community. Tributes to Bruno Zanin. Number 7. Renowned for his dedication to fitness and bodybuilding, Andre Cavalcanti was a celebrated figure within the international fitness community. His commitment to the sport was not just a personal pursuit, but also an inspiration to many who followed his career and achievements. Cavalcanti, 
a professional bodybuilder from Brazil, was a prominent competitor, known for his rigorous training regimen and success in various competitions, contributing significantly to the bodybuilding scene. Born on May 10, 1990, in Parana, Brazil, Cavalcanti grew into the sport from a young age, driven by a passion for physical fitness and a desire to push the limits of human strength and endurance. His career was marked by several prestigious titles and accolades, reflecting his skill, discipline, and dedication. As a member of the International Fitness and Bodybuilding Federation, he not only competed but also served as a role model and mentor to aspiring bodybuilders. Beyond the gym, Cavalcanti was known for his vibrant personality and charitable activities. He often engaged in community outreach programs, advocating for health and fitness as accessible and essential for everyone. His efforts extended beyond his personal training, aiming to inspire a healthier lifestyle in his community. Tragically, Andre Cavalcanti passed away at the age of 34, following a motorcycle accident in Parana, Brazil. His untimely death has left a void in the fitness community and among those he inspired. Cavalcanti is survived by his family, friends, and a legion of fans who admired his achievements and aspired to his work ethic and vitality. The legacy of Andre Cavalcanti remains influential in the world of bodybuilding and fitness. His life's work continues to inspire fitness enthusiasts around the world, reminding us of the impact one individual can have on a global community. His dedication to his craft and his community will not be forgotten. Tributes to Andre Cavalcanti. Number 6. A titan of the jazz world, Jim Rotondi distinguished himself as a premier hard bop trumpeter, composer, and educator. His profound influence on jazz was marked by his dynamic playing style and innovative contributions to the genre, making him a pivotal figure in modern jazz. Jim Rotondi was born on August 28, 1962, in Butte, Montana. A prodigious talent from a young age, Rotondi's passion for music led him to the University of North Texas where he honed his skills and immersed himself in the vibrant jazz scene. After graduating, he became a central figure in New York City's jazz circuit, performing with iconic musicians and ensembles, including the Toshiko Akiyoshi Jazz Orchestra and the renowned band One For All. Throughout his career, Rotondi released numerous albums that showcased his skill as both a leader and a sideman. His work with record labels such as Criss Cross and Smoke Sessions Records received critical acclaim, further cementing his status in the jazz community. Notable for his versatility, Rotondi was equally at home in electric and acoustic settings, often blending traditional jazz elements with modern sounds. Beyond his performances, Rotondi was committed to nurturing the next generation of musicians. He served as an educator at several prestigious institutions where he taught and inspired countless young artists. His approach to teaching was characterized by a deep respect for the craft and a desire to push students to explore their musical boundaries. Tragically, Jim Rotondi passed away at the age of 61. His death marks a significant loss to the jazz world, but his legacy lives on through his recordings, his influence on other musicians, and the many students he mentored. Rotondi's contributions to jazz will continue to be celebrated, ensuring that his impact will be felt for generations to come. Tributes to Jim Rotondi Number 5. Renowned for her innovative contributions to theatrical sonography, Kirsten Dalholm was a pioneering Danish artist and artistic director who masterfully blended art with performance. 
Over her illustrious career, Dale Holm crafted more than 30 performances that redefined the boundaries of traditional theater through the use of experimental installations, optical illusions, and existential themes. Her work, recognized for its artistic bravery and intellectual depth, earned her prestigious awards such as the Thorvaldsen Medal in 2013 and the ISPA Artist Award for the Performing Arts in 2015. Born on April 5, 1945 in Vila, Denmark, Dale Holmes' journey into the arts began after matriculating from high school when she pursued textile arts at the Verkunstschule in Krefeld, Germany, followed by studies at Kunsthandwerkerskolen in Copenhagen. Her early career saw her designing costumes for the writer Otto Sigvaldi, whom she married in 1969, and later as a sonographer for the Rimfax Theater Group. In 1977, she co-founded the Billedstoff Theatret, a theatrical collective that operated until 1985, where she developed new forms of performance art. Dale Holmes' most significant contribution came with the founding of the Hotel Pro Forma Theater Group in 1985, which she directed for decades. Her productions often placed the audience in unconventional positions, changing their perspectives and engaging them in the narrative in unique ways. Notable works include Terra Australia Incognita at the National Museum in 1989 and Why Does It Become Night Mother at Aarhus City Hall the same year. Throughout her career, Delholm collaborated with architects, writers and composers, continually pushing the envelope of what could be achieved in theatrical presentation. Her work was not only a display of artistic expression, but also a profound commentary on belief, identity, and the human condition, influencing the renewal of theatrical sonography across the globe. Kirsten Dalholm passed away just days after her 79th birthday. Her legacy continues to inspire and impact the world of performing arts profoundly, tributes to Kirsten Dalholm. Number 4. Renowned for her extraordinary contributions to Georgian theater and cinema, Ketavan Kiknadze was a pivotal figure in the arts. Celebrated as a People's Artist of Georgia and recipient of the prestigious Shota Rustaveli State Award. Born on May 10, 1939, in Borjomi, Georgian SSR, Ketavan embarked on her artistic journey at the Tbilisi State Theater Institute, graduating in 1959. Her career spanned several decades during which she became synonymous with dynamic and influential performances. Ketavan's tenure at the Marjanishvili Theater and later at the Rustaveli Theater marked a period of prolific activity where she contributed to over 100 theatrical performances, earning acclaim for roles in plays such as I See the Sun and Charlie's Aunt. Her filmography includes significant works like Meeting with the Past and Data Mulberry, where her performances left an everlasting mark on Georgian cinema. Offstage, Ketavan was deeply involved in cultural and community activities. She was a member of various artistic unions and actively participated in the Women for Peace organization, showcasing her commitment not only to the arts but also to social causes. Ketavan's impact was further recognized through numerous accolades, including the Order of Honor in 1999 for her significant contributions to the arts. Her legacy is also honored through her recognition as an honorary citizen in both the United States and her hometown of Borhomi, reflecting her international and local influence. Ketevan Kiknadze passed away at the age of 85, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and influence. Her work remains a cornerstone of Georgian cultural heritage, revered for its depth and artistic integrity. Tributes to Ketevan Kiknadze. Number 3. Celebrated for his championship-winning prowess and international recognition in rugby union, Ian Bucket distinguished himself as a front-row forward 
who excelled on both national and academic stages, his robust performances for Swansea and London Welsh, alongside his achievements in the 1992 Oxford University team, marked him as a pivotal figure in Welsh rugby. Ian Bucket was born on December 23, 1967, in Swansea, Wales. Throughout his career, he garnered three full caps for Wales and became known for his strategic play and physical presence on the field. Bucket's rugby career was characterized by numerous highlights, including his participation in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia, and his significant contributions to the men's light flyweight division in boxing. Away from the field, Bucket's life was deeply rooted in his community and family. After retiring, he pursued a career as a police officer, demonstrating his commitment to public service. His life was tragically cut short by an incurable disease, passing away at the age of 47. Ian Bucket's legacy in the rugby world remains influential, as he continues to inspire young athletes and sports enthusiasts. His contributions to rugby and his community are remembered and celebrated by many. Tributes to Ian Bucket. Number 2. Renowned for his prowess in the boxing ring, Marion Veliku distinguished himself as a formidable athlete, clinching medals on both the European and global stages. His remarkable journey in the sport began with a bronze medal at the 2000 European Amateur Boxing Championships in Tampere, Finland, followed by a silver at the World Amateur Boxing Championships in Belfast the following year. These accolades underscored his technical skill and tenacity, earning him a revered place among Romania's boxing elite. Born on July 4, 1977 in Romania, Marion's athletic talent was evident early on. His participation in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney marked a significant milestone in his career, despite a challenging match against Cuba's Micro Romero. Beyond his athletic achievements, Marion's life after boxing was equally commendable. He served as a police officer with the General Police Directorate of Bucharest, demonstrating his dedication to public service. Marion's life, tragically cut short at 47, after a battle with an incurable disease. His death has been deeply felt across the sporting community and beyond, with tributes pouring in from former teammates, friends, and fans. The Dinamo Sports Club and the Romanian Boxing Federation both expressed profound sorrow over the loss of a national sports hero and a beloved community member. Marian Veliku leaves behind a legacy characterized not only by his competitive spirit in the ring, but also by his commitment to his community and country. His story remains an inspiring testament to the resilience and enduring spirit of a true athlete. His achievements continue to inspire young boxers in Romania and around the world, ensuring that his impact on the sport will be felt for generations to come. Tributes to Marian Veliku. What's trending on the internet? News 1. Authorities have identified social media influencer Summer Wheaton as a driver involved in a fatal collision on the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu on July 4. The tragic incident resulted in the death of 44-year-old rideshare driver Martin Okiki, who was pronounced dead at the scene. According to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Wheaton was driving a Mercedes-Benz that veered across the center median striking an oncoming Cadillac SUV. The crash occurred around 10.30 p.m., shortly after Wheaton reportedly attended an event at the upscale Nobu restaurant, though police have yet to confirm her presence there. Both Wheaton and a passenger from the Cadillac were urgently transported to UCLA Ronald Reagan Medical Center for treatment. Details surrounding the cause of the accident are still under investigation, 
with authorities looking into all aspects, including the event at Nobu, which was allegedly held without proper permits. As the community mourns the loss of Martin Okiki, city officials are prompted to re-evaluate traffic and safety measures on the busy highway. The incident has sparked conversations about roadway safety and the responsibilities of event organizers and drivers alike in preventing such tragedies. News 2. In a heartbreaking incident at the NYPD's training facility in the Bronx, a police recruit tragically lost his life after collapsing during a rigorous training exercise. The 33-year-old recruit was participating in the exertion course at Rodman's Neck when he suddenly became lightheaded and passed out around 11 a.m. this past Wednesday. Emergency services quickly transported him to Jacoby Hospital, where he was sadly pronounced dead. The recruit was eagerly anticipating his graduation from the police academy, which was scheduled for this coming Monday. The exact cause of death is yet to be determined and will be investigated by the city's medical examiner. The NYPD has not released the name of the recruit pending notification of next of kin. This tragic event has cast a shadow over the NYPD as they mourn the loss of a promising officer whose commitment to serving the community ended so abruptly. The department extends its deepest sympathies to the recruit's family, friends, and fellow cadets during this difficult time. News 3. A devastating incident in St. Paul, Minnesota resulted in the death of a young father when fireworks in his car exploded following a crash. The accident occurred near Wilson Avenue and Howard Street at around 9 p.m. local time on Saturday, July 6. According to local news outlets, the 22-year-old driver, Robert B.J. Jones, tragically lost his life in the fiery explosion. Authorities reported that Jones's vehicle veered off the road, colliding with a tree in a light pole. The impact caused the fireworks inside the car to ignite, leading to a series of explosions. Despite the immediate danger, nearby residents attempted to come to Jones's aid, but the intensity of the flames and explosions made it impossible to approach the vehicle safely. Brittany Roberts, Jones's cousin, remembered him as lively, full of love and laughter. The local community and the St. Paul Police Department are mourning this significant loss and have cautioned the public about the dangers of transporting fireworks, especially during the festive season. As investigations continue, authorities are considering speed as a potential factor in the crash. The tragic event has left the community and Jones's family in mourning, highlighting the unforeseen dangers of fireworks. News 4. In a heart-wrenching sequence of events, Arizona's brutal summer temperatures have led to two tragic deaths. Cortinez Logan, a nine-year-old boy, succumbed to the extreme heat during a family hike at South Mountain Park and Preserve near Phoenix. The incident occurred last Tuesday, and despite immediate medical attention, he was pronounced dead after being airlifted to a nearby hospital. Only days later, the community was shaken again when four-month-old Tana Ray Rublowski passed away during a family outing at Lake Havasu. After showing signs of distress, Tana was also airlifted but sadly could not be revived. These incidents have prompted local authorities and the National Weather Service to issue stern warnings about the dangers of outdoor activities during peak heat times. Firefighters and first responders emphasize the importance of hydration and caution while outdoors. As investigations into these incidents continue, the community mourns the unimaginable loss of two young lives and calls for increased awareness and preventive measures to avoid future tragedies linked to the harsh climatic conditions. News 5. The city of Louisville is in mourning following the passing of Reverend Jeffrey Ellis, a devoted civil rights activist and community leader who died at the age of 84. Reverend Ellis, who passed away last Saturday, leaves behind a legacy of compassion and social justice that shaped the Smoketown neighborhood and beyond. Having dedicated over two decades to public service in various governmental roles, Rev. Ellis was profoundly committed to youth intervention and the prevention of gang violence. His work has left an everlasting mark on the community, fostering hope and guiding countless young lives towards brighter futures. Rev. Ellis is survived by his loving wife of 43 years, six daughters, and a host of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, all of whom share his commitment to community and service. The Ellis family invites the community to join them in celebrating his life and contributions. A public celebration of life service will be held this Friday from 4 to 8 p.m. at Quinn Chapel AME Church on West Muhammad Ali Boulevard with a continuation of remembrance on Saturday morning at 11. Louisville has indeed lost a pillar of strength and advocacy, but Reverend Ellis's legacy will undoubtedly live on through the many lives he touched. 
News 6. In a startling incident on Monday, a United Airlines Boeing lost a wheel while ascending from Los Angeles International Airport, yet managed to complete its journey to Denver without further complications. The aircraft, carrying 174 passengers and seven crew members, landed safely, and no injuries were reported either in the air or on the ground. This event marks another in a series of issues for United Airlines, which has been under a safety review by federal aviation officials due to similar incidents earlier this year. According to eyewitnesses and pilots from other flights, the detached wheel was seen traversing runways and taxiways before coming to a halt near the airport's southwest corner. United Airlines has confirmed the recovery of the wheel and stated that an investigation is underway to determine the cause of this unusual occurrence. The Federal Aviation Administration is also conducting a probe into the matter. This recent wheel detachment follows another incident involving a United Airlines flight that resulted in damage to several vehicles at San Francisco International Airport. Despite these troubling events, the airline has reassured passengers of its commitment to safety, bolstered by increased FAA oversight of its operations. Number 1. A pivotal figure in the landscape of contemporary Canadian Aboriginal art, Alex Genvier, is celebrated for pioneering modernist abstraction infused with the cultural and spiritual heritage of his Dene roots. Known for his participation in the Indian Group of Seven, Jean Vier's work has been instrumental in reshaping the narrative around indigenous art in Canada. Born on February 28, 1935, on the Lagoff Reserve in Cold Lake, Alberta, Jean Vier's artistic journey began at a young age, despite the hardships of being sent to the Blue Quills Indian Residential School. His formal training at the Provincial Institute of Technology and Art in Calgary introduced him to European modernists, which influenced his unique style. Jean Vier graduated with honors in 1960, becoming one of the first Canadian First Nations artists to receive professional art education. Jean Vier's career was marked by significant achievements, including his role in organizing the Indigenous presence at Expo 67 and his creation of monumental works like the mosaic Iron Foot Place at Rogers Place in Edmonton. His work Morning Star, painted on the dome of the Canadian Museum of History, is regarded as one of his most significant contributions, reflecting the historical and cultural epochs of the indigenous peoples through dynamic forms and colors. His art consistently addressed themes of identity, confrontation, and reconciliation, using abstract forms to articulate complex social and political messages. Jean Vier's commitment to his culture and his craft earned him numerous accolades, including the Order of Canada, and the Governor General's Awards in Visual and Media Arts. Jean Vier's influence extended beyond his canvas, advocating for Indigenous rights through his art and his actions, notably by signing his paintings with his treaty number to protest against government policies. Alex Jean Vier passed away at the age of 89, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and influence. He is survived by his family and a community that reveres his contributions to both the art world and the advocacy for indigenous peoples. Tributes to Alex Janvier. Renowned for revolutionizing wildlife documentaries and travel television, Fred R. Krug's work on iconic programs such as Animal World, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, 